Hey, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing today? So the main reason why I decided to watch Rosemary's Baby is because a lot of people have been comparing it to the movie Mother that came out recently, both in positive ways and in negative ways. And I can say, after watching this movie, I can see the similarities, but at the same token, they are belligerently different films. It's kind of like when you're meeting twins for the first time. Like, yeah, they look the same when you first meet them, but a lot of times when you get to know them, you start to figure out how dissimilar they really are, and they're almost two completely different people. I mean, shit, a lot of the times, one twin is not even the same height as the other one. But anyway, the basic plot for Rosemary's Baby is basically in the title. The movie's basically about a young lady who's trying to get pregnant with her husband, and then it's about her basically coping with that pregnancy. Like, they move into this new apartment, and that's weird, and they're getting used to it. And then they got these neighbors that are a little bit nosy, and they're trying to get used to that. And then she starts having, like, weird dreams, and then she has to switch doctors at one point. Like, a bunch of eerie shit is going on around her. And that's basically your movie. And overall, there's a lot of thematic elements in the movie that I really thought that, like, conveyed pretty well on the screen. Mainly themes about, like, a, a woman being controlled by men, or, like, a woman who doesn't have complete control over her body anymore, once she has another person growing inside of her. And I also like the chemistry between Mia Farrow and the guy that plays her husband. Like, I thought they did a really good job of making this, like, very flawed relationship. But at the same time, they do love each other, and despite the fact that it's complicated, they really do try and make it work. And also, after watching it, I can see now that this movie is basically the blueprint for every psychological horror to come after it. I'm sure this isn't the first movie to attempt it, but as far as I know, it's probably the most notable. However, despite the fact that this movie is mostly hailed as a classic, it did come with some negatives, in my opinion. And the two main negatives are the acting, and some of the dialogue, especially in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the movie. There's also a few issues that I have with the pacing, but I understand why the pacing was the way it was. It was for, like, a tension-building thing, so I, I, that's more of a tweak as opposed to, like, a negative. But I have to say, the first few minutes of the movie, the acting and the dialogue just did not hold up for me. Mind you, though, this movie is about 50 years old, so it's kind of understandable. However, for, like, a modern audience, it will be hard for some people to get into it. And I understand why it's like that. It's because for centuries, actors were mainly in theaters on a stage, and they had to belt everything out, and they had to over-enunciate everything. And then all of a sudden comes the film industry in the 20th century, so then they have to carry over that type of acting into a completely different medium. Because at that point, that was the only type of acting that was, you know, known to most of the world. Acting has progressed in certain ways over the decades that you can see the difference depending on, like, when your film was made. And sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. But in this case, it didn't really work, again, only mostly in the beginning. Throughout the movie, it got a little bit more serious and it felt more realistic as we get towards the third act of the movie. Which brings me to my next point about this movie is that the third third act is batshit insane. And I mean that in the best way possible. I really enjoyed the third act. Not like in a joyous way, like it made me happy, because it's a pretty fucked up third act. But just the artistic value, the creativity, and just the ballsy attitude that it had for like basically the entire third act, I thought was pretty awesome. And realistically, that third act is probably why this movie is so fucking memorable. Like, I'm not gonna give it away, but the last 20 minutes of the movie, there was a lot of what the fuck moments that you'll never forget. Like, the movie started off with this really eerie, creepy humming voice. Like, it was creepy to begin with. Like, that's how it started. So imagine how fucked up the ending is. But anyway, guys, overall, I can see why this movie is hailed as a classic, both from like an artistic and an entertainment value perspective. So based on all that, I'm gonna give it an 8.3 out of 10. Mind you, that score is on today's standards, like today. And any movie that stands the test of time like that is definitely worth checking out, but only if you don't have a lot of trouble with nightmares. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Have you seen this movie? Have you even heard of it? Hop in the comments, let me know what's up. Other than that, if you like this review, give me a like, subscribe to all that other bullshit, and I will catch you guys later.